How's it going, everyone? I just received a survey here that ranks the top American states, actually all of them, from first to last, regarding which are the best states for doing business. And then we include a series of metrics that are extremely important. And I have been talking about this for years here on my channel. And these metrics are going to be really cool. So I will leave the link to this research in the video description for you to check out. This research reports on 2024, but also projects for 2025. So remember that we are talking about the numbers for 2024 projected for the year 2025. There are other metrics here from other research that I found as well. But I found this one simpler, easier, and more fun for you, including links for you to click on and check out. So the first thing I think is super important for you to consider when you go to a place. Many people think, oh, but I want to see quality of life. Well, quality of life is if you go to the middle of a forest, you will have quality of life. No one is going to annoy you, maybe the mosquitoes, but you use a repellent and no one is going to give you any kind of problem. No one is going to go into the middle of the forest to steal your bicycle parked in front of your house. Unless you are a chimpanzee, then you won't have this kind of problem. When you go to very populated places, it is obvious that you will encounter problems in large cities. If you choose a slightly smaller city, perhaps these problems will be a bit smaller. If you choose a much larger city, obviously these problems will be amplified by the number of people. So you need to find a nice equation in the middle for you to position yourself. And it's not enough to just arrive in that place and set up your business. For example, if you leave, I don't know, Salvador and go to establish a business there in Porto Alegre, the gaucho is very regionalist. You will arrive there with your Salvador accent and want to do business in Porto Alegre where the gaucho, the localist, is very closed off and very conservative. You won't be able to just show up and start selling. You won't. They will want to know who you are. He will want to see what you are up to, what you are doing. He will ask for a recommendation, a reference about you. Outside of Brazil, it's the same thing. If it's like this inside, imagine outside. So outside of Brazil, you will see the same thing. You will see states that are more regionalist, states that are less so, states that are more open to foreign culture, and states that are more closed. This research will provide a lot of information for you. I will mention the top 10 and whether I agree with them. First, Virginia. Virginia is really cool. I like Virginia a lot. I think it's very nice, but I don't think it's something great for Brazilians. The big problem there is the climate difference and the cultural difference. The American born in Virginia, and I had quite a bit of contact with three who were very close to me, who were from Virginia, are still, they are quite local. They have a more closed mindset. So I don't know if it would be very good for Brazilians. Secondly, North Carolina is undoubtedly a wonderful place. Sensational, very welcoming, and really cool. I think that there we will have a workforce, what they call a workforce, which is the labor itself. I don't think it's that easy to find people there. If you are going to open a business, you might have problems finding people. Third place on this list, Texas. Well, without a doubt, Texas is growing tremendously. It is currently one of the fastest growing states. There is undoubtedly more investment by far. All the mega investors are putting money into Texas. We see growth and construction everywhere. There are times when it even gets annoying because there's dust, roads being widened, and you get stuck in traffic because of the road work. It's crazy. But here, as they rightly mention in this research, I even went to take a look at another number there. It's the workforce. Here you will have a lot of difficulty finding workers, people to work in your business. Because it is close to the border, people often think that it is very easy to find a job here, but it is not due to the legislation. Getting a job is easy, but finding employees is difficult because many do not stay here due to the legislation. Many immigrants end up leaving because of the laws that restrict even the illegal ones. So these people end up passing through and going to other states. Here, there are really more documented people. You don't see many undocumented individuals here openly, explicitly, as you do in Florida, for example, as you do in Massachusetts, for example, as you do in California, for example. You don't see that here, but they are more reserved. They tend to keep to themselves to avoid drawing too much attention. So. 
This could really be a problem for the workforce. Finding employees here is very difficult. Third, Georgia. Georgia is a really nice place. I like Georgia a lot, I think. Many Brazilians would adapt easily there. Fifth place, Florida. No doubt about it, right? Florida is the flagship destination for Brazilians. Brazilians love to arrive and go near Mickey. And this ends up being a problem as well, because you will arrive there and there will be many people doing the same thing as you, speaking the same language as you, competing in the same market as you. So perhaps it is a bit more complex there. But the infrastructure in Florida is without a doubt excellent. Missouri, I do not know. If I say anything to you, I'm lying. I've been to Missouri only once, so I don't have much, much to say. Ohio is really nice. A lot of people are going to Ohio right now. It's a place where you're a bit more remote, colder and all that, but you will have a lot of labor, especially if you are going to set up a factory or produce something. There you will find good labor with reasonable costs and in a certain quantity, it will be really nice. Tennessee. A lot of people are talking about Tennessee to me right now. I have been to Tennessee a few times. I really like Tennessee for vacation. If you look at Jack Daniels, which is made there in Tennessee, it's a whiskey, so to speak, a really strong bourbon. And by the second shot, you're already quite drunk. It was created there for a single purpose, right? Because it's really cold there. So I think a lot of people end up creating expectations about the TNC, especially now with the legislative flexibilities for doctors and nurses, where you no longer need to complete a residency. They are really opening the doors, genuinely wanting people to go there. I think it's really cool, but remember that there is the issue of the cold and the issue of localism. They are quite closed off regarding that. Michigan is really nice, but it is also very cold. My partner, Robert, is from Michigan. He was born in Michigan and he moved to Florida. He is 28 years old, if I'm not mistaken. He is 72, so he has been more towards the South for many years, but he also goes to Michigan a lot. His family is all from Michigan, so I've been there a few times, including with him. I love Michigan. I think it's really cool, but also very cold. Lastly, Washington. Remember that he is talking about Washington State here, right? He is not talking about Washington, D.C. here. He is talking about Washington State, so he is referring to up there above California. I think it's really cool. There are a lot of people going there, especially technology companies. It's very, very, very expensive and very cold. So remember this, okay? I'm going to leave this complete list here for you because otherwise this video is going to be huge with me commenting on each one of them for you. But I think there are many important pieces of information for those thinking about coming to the United States. Take a look at it because it has a lot of cool stuff. Stay with God. A big hug. Thank you.